It is I, it is she, she is Lapel. I am your host for today and I am joined by my wonderful co-host, Genevieve. Hi guys. Yes. Before we get started, let me introduce the cast, please. Hi guys, my name is Mimi, as you know. Hello guys, it's Catherine. And we have a wonderful guest today, Emma Fa. I'll let you introduce yourself, okay? Yes. Hi, my name is Rachel MFA, and I am a writer, and I'm also a survivor of SA. I'm the founder of Sexual Assault Africa and the Transformation Foundation, and our goal is to spread more awareness and fight against sexual assault. All right. So I have two disclaimers today. One of the disclaimers is that rape will be pronounced as grape. And another disclaimer is that sexual assault will be pronounced as SA. And also, wherever you're listening to us from, we are on YouTube as well. Hit the subscribe button and turn on your notifications. We want to hear from you. So give us a comment, give us suggestions, ask your questions. We listen and we will reply back to all of you. So let's dive in. Um, I want to give the platform back to you, Rachel. I mean, it's amazing what you've started, you know, Sexual Assault Africa. Um, Tell us a little bit about that and when you founded it, because I was whizzing through your website and I couldn't find the date when you established that. So give us a bit more information on that. Okay, so I would say that I founded Sexual Assault Africa in about 2020. Um, What sparked the creation of Sexual Assault Africa, as as I said, I'm a survivor myself. And following an experience I had in 2019, I felt like I really want to help other people come forward about their experiences because I know how hard it is, Mm -hmm. especially in the type of society that we live in where people always blame the victim. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. And obviously, all of you, I know that we have viewers from all over the world, from Ghana, from UK, everywhere, but we know you have an American accent. (laughs) So we know you weren't born here. So let's quickly, oh, tell us, tell us a bit about that because I'm really interested in like what you're doing in Ghana right now. So yeah. yeah. So I was born here, but I am Ghanaian American. My dad's Ghanaian American. So that's where the accent is from too, but I'm based here primarily. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So you said you founded that. What prompted you to say, you know what, I'm going to establish this. Is it established in Ghana or is it established in the US? It's established here. Okay. So what prompted you to say, you know, I'm going to do this in Ghana. Why Ghana? Because, um, in the African society in general, I personally feel like there's, I, I think in every society, there's some level of, um, covering up or just the silencing of survivors and everything and the stigma which is one of the main reasons why people don't come forward what if they think i'm lying Mm -hmm. what if they you know just don't believe me Mm -hmm. or you know anything could happen um what if i get slut shamed yeah you know you know how it is being a girl you know someone does something to you without your consent and now you're the Oh, you're the one who was asking for it, all of that. And so I felt like, um, especially from sharing my experiences with friends and stuff like that, I realized that there are so many people who have been through this, both male and female, because SA is not gender exclusive. Yeah. Um, everyone can fall victim to sexual assault. It doesn't matter your gender, your yep. age, nothing. So, um, basically I was like, look, we need to start talking. Definitely. And what made me feel comfortable talking was the fact that other people would share their experiences. So I was like, I want to be part of this. And if my story by sharing it can help someone come, um, out of whatever they're going through, speak up whatever it may be i just definitely wanted to be a part of that wow it's very noble of you thank you to you know put your effort into building an ngo to give back to society yes ma'am you know so i I clap for you and i applaud you on that i want to go to my co-host like when you think of this ngo like what comes to mind do you feel like is needed in today's society yeah and want to hear from you a little yeah i do think is needed because 
even though there are a lot of people who do not know what's going on, the few that know what's going on are willing to support you. Because I know, I'm sure you get sponsors, you get funds, or other people who do not turn a so blind eye. So I'm still building it up. Mm-hmm. So, so far, it's been like an entity that's just like everyone who's helping me run it. Mm-hmm. But we're working towards expanding. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Very good. Very yes. good. And so from the cast members, I mean, you know, we know you and your story is a little, um, you know, so what are your views on SA and Grape? And how important do you think that it is to have more NGOs like we do from Rachel in Ghana specifically or around the world, to be honest with you? Okay, thank you, Lapel. <laughs> so I think I would, I would have to sympathize with you. And also, like Lapel said, this is such a great initiative that you started and hopefully it will open the doors for more people that have are actually victims of SA and grape to not just come out, but also help people that are going through similar things. Mm-hmm. So for me, I, I feel like it's, it's such a sensitive topic, but then because it's also sensitive, people like to shy away or people don't like to create awareness if they go through do those things because of especially the stigmatization that it might come out so that's a very brave move thank and you. like applaud you for that thank you and we i, I want to know more about yes. it and everything yeah. so yeah yourself no i think you're doing so well um you're a young woman i feel like um Essay is something that a lot of people have experienced, but they don't even know that I've been sexually assaulted because they don't they don't have the education about it. They feel like, oh, maybe the person grape is the only form of sexual assault. But there are so many. I feel like you should educate people on that yes. since you have yes. more knowledge. So yes, so it is true that some people don't even see. Um, I almost said the M word. Let me start again. So yes, so some people don't see things outside of grape as essay. Like they just see it as touching, Mm. but they don't understand that it is essay. It falls under essay um, legally. Mm -hmm. And um, it is a crime. It's a felony. It's an actual crime. And many people do not know that. They think that even even grape crass, mm-hmm. some people, they, 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 they don't even see it yeah. as that. Because, mind you, some people are actually taught to impose and force themselves on people. So some people don't even see grape as anything. Mm-hmm. They almost see it as courting in wow. some sense yeah mm-hmm. yeah wow very interesting i mean you've paused slightly so i thought it's a great opportunity for me to just give the definition of sexual assault so sexual assault in lame man's terms is anything sexual without your consent anything sexual a kiss a touch a look even mm-hmm. you know if they're staring at certain parts of you consistently and you feel uncomfortable that can be deemed as sa so i want all of you guys to be educated on that um mm-hmm. i'm going to bring it back to you and let you continue from where you left off yeah so basically when somebody touches you without your consent as she said it could be you know, any part of your body, because some people feel like it's, you know, your behind or what you have in front of you, but it can also be your legs. Mm -hmm. This is a really common thing that people do here. You'll just be with someone, then, no, hey, how are you doing? (laughs) You know, like just unprovoked, Mm -hmm. unprovoked. And, you know, there's this misconception that, oh, you had to have been doing something maybe maybe you are too friend friendly mm-hmm. maybe you are too friendly maybe you are being too nice or you are flirting or something even if someone is flirting that like flirting is is verbal it's mm-hmm. verbal for it to go to the physical consent needs to take yeah. 
And many people just don't get that. You need to yeah. ask. Like, to ask. I'm yeah. feeling you. Are you yeah. feeling me? <laughs> Can we take it to the another <laughs> yeah. level? Exactly. Don't just, you know, assume. assume. Yeah. Because as women, we are friendly. We are feminine. We exactly. will smile. You know, we will be make everybody feel comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. So because we make you feel comfortable <laughs> doesn't mean that we want some, exactly. you know? Yeah. So that's very important to consider. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Catherine, I see you there smiling. <laughs> Tell us what you're thinking. So I like what she said Mm -hmm. in terms of sometimes, even with flirting, Mm -hmm. where someone is looking at you and wants to take it a step further, where it's Mm -hmm. like maybe touching and you're so uncomfortable because some people actually do those things and they don't even realize that what they're doing is bad. Mm -hmm. So I love the fact that we're creating awareness. People need to know because some people don't know that. Yes. So yeah, that's good. Yeah. And for me, I have been essayed. Um, on different occasions I'm not going to talk about all of them and some of them are worse than others <laughs> yep. but I'm going to talk about the lighter ones and these are the ones where I'm, I'm touched against my will you know I'm groped from my behind strangers that don't know me a guy just comes on to like, me starts on. kissing me touching me oh my God. and I'm very vulnerable because I may have had a lot of alcohol and uh, I didn't see it coming yeah you know and I didn't know I, for me, it was maybe I did something to make him feel that I wanted it. And isn't it natural anyway? So should I just not just accept it? But when I think about it, I mean, you didn't ask me. Yeah. Like, and it, sometimes it's like, I know the person as well. So it's like, oh, it's a bit of a sticky mm-hmm. one. Like we just yeah. partied like yeah. an hour ago, dancing to mm-hmm. all of the tunes and all of that. <laughs> and, then, and then this happened, but like, you kind of disrespected me. And I feel like we need to create those boundaries as women when it comes and as men as well, because it's not, as you said, gender Gender, bias. So we need to create those boundaries and we need to prior to anything happening, know within ourselves. Okay, this is this is something that Mm -hmm. I will not accept. You cannot just touch me. Sometimes Mm -hmm. you've created the boundaries, but sometimes essay starts from a man who's led by his ego, Mm -hmm. a man who can't like phantom the fact that you are rejecting him a man who can yes. handle rejection yeah that's what essay starts from a man led by his ego a man with no sexual discipline mm. or a woman and with i no love i love how now <laughs> women are fighting back like i've seen so many videos on social media like girls being grouped and punching their no. abuser wow i love yeah. that like yeah because there's some people that you you say oh i'm going to report you but where would i see you again like i'm a subconscious yes. where would i see you again so i love how women are responding now yeah they are fighting back mm-hmm. okay yeah. yeah i think we should do that more yeah we should do that more yeah. because we can't <laughs> resort to crying and <laughs> sometimes going to the law the law does nothing they always yeah. cover up for these men so yeah. so even with that one, it just brings me back to something that I saw online that people sell. So it's more like this pepper spray mm, and yep. there's like all those things that you can protect yourself with just in case you find yourself in such a situation. Yeah. So if somebody did, did that at the show and they went above and beyond, because I feel like if you try and disrespect me mm. by being, by touching me mm. when I don't like it or you don't even know me and you, you're touching me inappropriately, yeah. I have no right to to think about your good. I don't know if you understand yes. that. So I, I'm allowed to pepper spray you or yes. do something to I'm you. I'm allowed to punch Even you. I'm allowed to punch you, give you a taste or something <laughs> so that you don't try that again. And another thing is, the more that happens, the more it, it serves as a, a warning a warning to other guys or to the guy not to do it again. Because yeah. sometimes too, when they feel like they can do it to another girl. Mm. They, they never stop. They keep doing it till yeah. they meet someone that says, look, enough is enough. Yes. Yeah. So I think it's very important. So yeah, Mimi has a good point. <laughs> do you know what came to mind? What? On your website, you should create a page where girls send in pictures. Look, look, this one there is very difficult because, you know, you need to verify these things. Some people yeah. are malicious. And the legalities. I, but... I, you, I put their face there. I said, yeah. wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, my abuser. Yeah. Yeah. It's wanted. For I think some girls 
girls have actually done that on yeah, like, Twitter, are. like calling yeah. people out. Yes. And I love that and I love abusers that. are dying now. Like, <laughs> yes, I wish so you all funny. bad. I wish you all dead. Like, if you've <laughs> abused somebody before, if you've graped somebody yeah. before, I wish you nothing but the worst. May <laughs> anything ever go your way, I'm telling you. Because it's so traumatic, yeah? It is. Yeah. It is. It's very, very traumatic. You, you guys don't understand it. Yeah. It's so traumatic, so especially when the person goes about their normal life and you are left with like you're scarred and you're like always thinking about it and you can't get over it and he's just whoever it is is just having the time of their lives yeah Yeah. and And i'm seeing something i'm seeing um men masturbating in front of women i feel like that's sexual assault oh my god and and coming as some go as far as coming on your trousers like where you are where you come on your feet like it's so disgusting like has caught me and i'm just saying are you animals (laughs) and i'm hearing in the background (laughs) what's what's the meaning of that so i know he's watching something i know he's doing it's like yo, and the men wait, who wait, like no shrieking him. girls, him. even if I know yeah, him, you can't do that. And the That's men who like shrieking girls, their yeah, penis out of you the blue. Blocked, Why do you like doing that? I was screenshot it though. <laughs> I don't see the screenshot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I don't send me it again, okay? <laughs> like who raised these animals? Seriously, who but raised you? Do you know what? We have to also have sympathy for the abusers. Because a lot of people that have been abused, a lot of people that are abusers have mm-hmm. been abused. So, you know, it doesn't um, justify their action, but they also need help mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. well. Yeah. So, uh, tell me about that. Does your organization help abusers? So, should you help abusers? <laughs> I feel like the pain of going be, um, being abused should like wake you up. Like you should not seek help. Yeah, why do you want help? It doesn't mean it doesn't mean you should abuse other people. Seek help. Yeah, yeah. I have zero. Th- this thing for abusers. I have zero, zero sympathy. Yeah, yeah. I have zero sympathy. May you be hit by a bus. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> so, um, we currently don't have mm-hmm. something like that, but personally, I have thought about it because, um, you know, you think about the word reform mm-hmm. and then if you are a Christian, you think about the word forgiveness mm-hmm. and, you know, what exactly you know, these things mean to you. Um, You can still forgive someone and hold them accountable. And um, it's important to know that forgiveness is for you and for your healing, not that you've done this to me and, oh, I've forgiven you. It's it's for me. Mm -hmm. Um, I personally, um, I I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I should be the judge to say whether somebody can or can't be reformed. But, like, it's also not my place to exonerate you either. Yes. So... You know you're gonna have to deal with that. Yeah. Like you, yeah. you know, you chose to do what you did, mm-hmm. so you yeah. gotta deal with the consequences. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Have you had any help from like law enforcement, like police, like them other organizations that claim they are doing this and this yeah. for the bigger organization? So to tell you the truth, um, going to law enforcement was like the last thing on my mind. Because I've heard so many stories about how they've, like, disappointed. People have gone to, like, report their cases. The police will laugh at you. Mm. They may even, like, victim blame you. And what were you wearing? Mm. What time Mm. was it? What were you doing there? Why did he assault me? Yes, exactly. You know? So it was the last thing on my mind. I, like, I, I was like, even though I had evidence, mind you, I was just like... Where is it going to go? Where is it really going to go? I don't yes. think it's going to go anywhere, per se. But I can still do something about it. I can still talk about it. Yep. I can still point the person out. Mm-hmm. You know, I can still warn people. But um, I feel like there needs to be so much done in the legal and justice system yes. so that yep. more people feel comfortable yes. coming forward. Exactly. Yeah. There's no point in having a rule that doesn't, you know... Work. do anything mm-hmm. i think you've started something so maybe with your help and what you're doing they'll take this thing seriously you know yeah, I so, so i think you should keep doing what you're doing I it's very commendable will. and um you were brave enough to put it all in a book yeah. as well tell us about your book transformation 
And if you want to, you can, you know, I know you've spoken about it. You can give us a little uh, details about what prompted you and what made you want to put it in word format for others to read your story. Okay, so I wrote a book called Transformation. And what led me to write the book was an assault that happened in 2019. Um, to summarize it, so it's not, you know, so basically I lost a friend and her brother sexually assaulted me. So um, as you can imagine, like when it happened, you're like, did that, you know, did that really happen? You want to do something, you want to say something, you want to be abrasive, but you're yeah. like, his sister just died, mm -hmm. you know? So you, you, you start telling yourself all these things and then it just keeps you in this silent place. But um, it started to eat me up. And so I decided to like, you know, tell his mother and his mother told me that, because I told her, I, 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 this is what happened. Mm -hmm. I don't feel comfortable visiting anymore and I won't mm -hmm. be visiting your home and your family anymore because I don't feel safe around them. And she told me that if I don't visit again, she'll think about her deceased daughter, which is my deceased friend, and she'll start crying. Wow. Emotional manipulation. Yeah. Enablers. Like just yeah. Go, yeah. yeah. Something. So it was about her, not even about what you had mm -hmm. gone through. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So I confronted him about it, and we had a back and forth. And so from that exchange, that is what I have in the book. Mm -hmm. So I talked about that experience. I talked about being graped as a child mm -hmm. and um, just other experiences that I've had Sorry in about life, that. Yeah. other experiences that I've had in life and um, what I learned from them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, this is making me a bit emotional. Mm -hmm. Woo! It's, it's, it's quite triggering, yeah. to be honest with you, hearing your story and knowing that they are enablers. Like, with what happened to you, you said, oh, my friend has died. Yep. Oh, like, is it the right time? And for some people, it's, oh, it's my father. Yep. Oh, it's my friend. Oh, is this? So we all have those reasons as to why maybe we I shouldn't know. say something. And sometimes you may think, oh, it's not as big. Oh, yep. he only touched my breast. Oh, he only did that. But sometimes one thing could lead to another. And just to let you know that nothing is too small not to be um, insignificant. So I, as a lady to you, to the guys, to wherever you are, just know that you matter and anything that's happened to you, which is against what you wanted, should be taken up. Even if it happened a year ago two years ago three years ago you should actually deal with it whether through therapy whether filing the police report get it you know get the ball rolling so yeah it's, it is a it is a lot you know yeah. and it's not an easy topic to yeah, discuss mm -hmm. and um like what you said with your um late friend's brother's mother yeah. how she said she'll think yeah. about her late daughter it just lets us know that they are enablers and especially in the African society, people find it very shameful when things like this happen to their, especially girl child, yes. especially if she was a virgin or if she became pregnant through the essay or grape and they kind of cover it up and they don't really sympathize with the girl mm -hmm. and understand what she's going through. And she may have to have an abortion and she may have to grieve the loss of the child and she may have to go through so much. And now she becomes a product of that experience mm -hmm. and she becomes hardened by it. And then more of those things happen and she feels like, well, this is not the worst thing that's happened to me. So let me just fuck it up because my mom didn't care. My dad didn't care and let me just get on with life because this is the society that we live in but we shouldn't normalize these things yeah. and i think that's what your ngo is doing yeah. they're not normalizing these things and they're shedding light on it um so i think it's an amazing thing so i looked at your page and there's so many ways that we can you know uh, encourage you and support you we can donate we can volunteer tell us a bit about that so we're still building and expanding mm -hmm. to accommodate for all of that. But yeah. right now, they act as S um, Sexual Assault Africa mm -hmm. and the Transformation Foundation are online entities for the main meantime. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, lovely. Yes. Yeah. And in terms of the volunteering, what would you potentially be needing volunteers for? So I do want to have like outreach programs and go to schools and have talks because I think that consent education needs to be implemented in the school 
because um, we can't depend on people's home training mm -hmm. because some people don't get it. Some people just don't have certain conversations with their kids because it's awkward. You know, you don't want to have the sex talk with your kids. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they expect you you know to automatically to know. <laughs> know that oh don't do that when you're with the opposite sex yeah. and you can't do that because if you don't raise your children other forms of media will and they yes. will see things and yes. hear things and they will think it's okay yes. and they will continue and mind you some of these things happen in schools by students mm -hmm. and by teachers Teacher, so yeah. the consent education i think would really help and that's one of the main goals is to push for consent education being implemented in schools yeah. and hopefully we have our own uh, offenders registry one day. Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. My CFP politician. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, mm -hmm. like when you were talking, a song came to mind. Like back in the day, they used to campaign against. Like it's like this. Oh my ladies, all around the world. Do you remember I this song? That, if I've you want to live long, you gotta stay strong. I think I've heard that. <laughs> no <laughs> means, no <laughs> means, no <laughs> means, no yeah, means. No. No. I think I know the first. <laughs> So like we no, should no. get back to that. Like yeah. I would, I would make a music video to that song. Yeah. Like yeah. It's, it's like I we should more campaign. Songs, yeah, campaign. Yeah, we should more campaign songs. on this. These things should be on the TV, and yeah. I feel like maybe added to the curricula. Yes, yeah, you know, of be. the children. Because be. like when you spoke about the school thing, like it kind of happened to me as well. Mm -hmm. Me too. And it's a bit crazy how there's people that should be protecting the children that are actually not. So we need to have more accountability, and people should be given in the room you know maybe there should be a room in a school where people can go and talk to people like a school nurse or a counselor and they can, you know yeah, like guidance and counseling yeah i don't think we have school nurses um do we have school nurses some yeah, some, yeah some, some schools, schools have schools. school some nurses don't. but some yeah. don't yeah, yeah. yeah but like are the nurses do. trained enough yeah. for that mm -hmm. we need counselors not yeah. nurses N nurses maybe initially Maybe this is what happened to me. I'm hurt. The nurses in Ghana. <laughs> I agree with. I agree with. Sorry, what were you because, doing? <laughs> um, sometimes the nurses in Ghana. Okay. Sometimes people don't <laughs> know better. Yeah. So the nurses themselves, yeah. like, um, sometimes they're not educated. So yeah. you know, you'll go and the way you'll be looked at, and <laughs> and they're not all like that, though, mm, but, like, like that, yeah. it is um, important to give grace and understand that some people are not willfully ignorant. They're just ignorant. Yeah. They yeah. don't know any better, you know? Like you said, the education, the education is not there. It's not enough. Yeah. You know, you study um, grape and essay in is it social studies i think that's what it's called now it was citizenship education before but i think it's social studies now yeah, social like studies, you it's just yeah. something it's you know you're just studying crushed. exactly you just you know chew and pull so yeah. i can pass the exam but like people actually have to understand that um when someone has something like that happen to them it just opens a whole can of worms like you said some abusers are victims themselves they were victims unfortunately they became perpetrators mm -hmm. and um when you are essayed it affects your mental health mm -hmm. your mm -hmm. self-esteem your mm -hmm. sense of self-worth and then there are flashbacks, which I used to struggle with mm -hmm. a lot. Um, I used to wake up days in a row and just cry wow. and cry and cry and cry. And um, sometimes you, you, you feel like, oh, but I should be over this. It, you know, it wasn't, well, at least he didn't grieve me and all that stuff. But like, for someone to touch you, it's it's like it's a spiritual yep. thing, mm. you know, and we always talk about energy and mm. people's auras and everything. If someone has a bad mind mm. and then they've essayed you, that's definitely going to do a number on you. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And it mostly like comes from people you trust. Yes. You yes. believe they'll know better than yep. to try and do some stupid thing like that. But they end up doing that anyways. Yeah. And I always used, when I was younger, I always used to think like, oh, it could never happen to me. Like, yeah, like it could never be me. It could never be me because I wouldn't go to certain places. I'll avoid <laughs> certain places. And I, I, I always used to feel like it was people you don't know that can break you. Because mm. obviously people you know, you expect them to know better. But no, 
when I grew up, I realized that it's people you actually know that mm-hmm. that behave like animals. Yeah. yeah. And put you in those situations. Um, the M word, you will be touched or essayed or graped by those that you know it, mm-hmm. you, more than strangers. Is yeah. the, is the people that are around you that mm-hmm. will more likely do those things than strangers, which is mm-hmm. terrifying. Yes, yeah. and I think mm-hmm. part of the reason for that too is um, people see like everything as an opportunity. Some people just don't know how to just be friends with somebody. Some people. <sighs> don't know how to just sit down have a conversation some people you smile at them that's all mm-hmm. they think oh yeah that means yeah, that's I all want you. You want me. so it's also like you know how do people talk to each other like you know what do guys like tell each other like oh you were with these girls and you didn't touch them you didn't yeah. do this you do. so you see you are like fostering the mm-hmm. atmosphere where People are going to feel like when they are in the presence of the opposite sex, they have to, to do, do something. something. Yes. They have to make a move. Yeah. They have to throw themselves on this person. Yeah. Yeah. They have to force themselves on this mm-hmm. person. And it's part of the problem. Yeah. They see your presence, yeah. your mm-hmm. friendship, your kindness, your politeness, or just your existence mm-hmm. as an opportunity. Mm-hmm. And um, like you were saying, um, a lot of the times it will be somebody that, you no. know, and sometimes it's just a complete rando. Mm. You'll just be somewhere minding your business yeah. and you just, you know, you're feeling something, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. you're, you're feeling like, is that a hand? <laughs> <laughs> you know, is that a hand or something? Is it the Holy yeah. Spirit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. So, um, I think people just also need to be taught how to interact with the opposite ah, sex. Thank you. If you like someone, it's better to say it, mm-hmm. you know, with your words. Um, it's also like safer because even if you feel like, okay, um, because there is um, a marital grape mm-hmm. because yeah. it's all about consent <laughs> and exactly. it shows respect um, yeah. for your you know, your partner, who or whoever it is you're interacting with, because I feel like some people just don't know how to interact with the opposite sex. That's their problem. Yeah. Yeah. Problem. Yeah. 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 It's very challenging. But like you said, education is key. Yeah. It just leads me on to the next point of be careful, be, being careful with our drinks and our food as males and females yeah. like you know in ghana specifically and wherever you are in the world in london in the usa in europe i'm sure there's a culture of going out and having fun and in ghana yeah we have that dirty december culture yeah. and all of that and sometimes you, you can just be unaware you can be at the bar i love to go to republic in osu you know i like to have my ginger shots <laughs> you know and i'm not always looking i just pay and i'm like yeah hurry up and do it so like talk to us ladies <laughs> about that you know about um the f- being the careful that people don't slip things in our drinks okay so um you know the standard is never take your eyes off your drink and if you do just leave it um that's a hard one <laughs> <laughs> that's a hard <laughs> just leave it right because it's it's so pricey especially to, in our craft price. yeah with oh, how much is. everything <laughs> with how much everything um costs some people try and put like something on it to cover it uh-huh. um if you're with your friends you can you know you're supposed to look out for each other so yeah. you can ask uh-huh. your friend to like you know be <gasps> on the lookout and sometimes to you can see like a powdery Mm -hmm. um some some substance or something floating around in your drink that wasn't there before so these little things but um also like i do want people to know that like you can try everything you can to keep yourself safe like Um, At the end of the day, if somebody has made up their mind that they want to take advantage of someone, like they're going to do it and you shouldn't blame yourself for that. It's not your fault. You know, you can you can do any and everything. I mean, I didn't expect my friend's brother to essay me because who who is thinking that? Especially at that time. Yeah, his sister sister just passed. So, you know, you 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 really don't see it coming. So. 
people just shouldn't beat themselves up. But, you know, we always try our best. Um, yeah. We look out for each other. We get um, um, pepper spray, mm -hmm. yes. tasers, yes. Um, and self-defense classes. You Ooh, know, I like that. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. You Maybe know, you, you can, can start can, doing that. I want to. Yes, I'll come. I want to. <laughs> I want to. We, have that. we, we don't have that. We don't have that here. Um, I, I think, think we have that. Yes. <laughs> the boxing ring. They're like boxing um, shows and stuff like that. Oh, okay. And then even with some gyms, Okay. There's yes, a boxing, they do. like training session. Yes, so. okay. they have kickboxing, yeah, which kickboxing. is kind of like uh, wow. self defense. And there are some. Um, I have seen um, some people doing like workshops, like for um, self defense, like three days. Yeah. So I mean, people are doing mm. it, but it just needs to become more. Oh, yeah. Um, and there uh, should be like actual classes people can take that are consistent. Yeah. Wow! 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 wow. Yeah. But, but you know, you know, I like what you said. We need to take extra classes and all those things. But what do we necessarily do about the people that don't mind doing these acts? Because, you know, you said something about the law and yeah. the fact that the law, people don't even really respect the law in yeah. terms of when it comes to these essay and mm -hmm. rape. Because when you go report such cases, people... They would rather victimize you or they'll rather say, what yep. were you wearing? So I feel like, look, no matter what happens, they also need to be held accountable for what they're doing because they're supposed to protect their citizens. Yeah. And you're supposed to, your citizens are supposed to feel safe mm -hmm. wherever they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you, I feel like we need to also, I, I know a couple of um, law enforcement in Ghana, like the Dof suits, all those people with that also help with these kind of situations. So sometimes, in as much as we, I think when we disregard it and we say, oh, they're not going to do anything, it also gives whoever wants to do something, some form of momentum that, mm -hmm. like, after all, there's nothing going to be done exactly. about yeah. it. And that's something we need to change, not just as a society, but, like, as a country yeah. moving forward. Because a lot of people, there's this term, People are mad. Yeah. <laughs> people, there are a lot of crazy people mm -hmm. around. I and feel like we need yeah. to bring Mame Dokuno back. Yeah. Oh, do you remember by that show? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not by, by the fireside. Side. Oh, which one? She used to out rapists. She oh, brings yeah. a victim. Yeah, yeah it TV was a TV show, show on yeah, Metro TV. We need to take accountability. Yeah. It was it was really Nasty. effective. Mm -hmm. It was really, really effective. Yeah. I feel like maybe you should stop. <laughs> we need we need we need yeah. partnership with yeah. people they that bring the victims sometimes they cover those their who are not faces, comfortable yep. like yeah. they cover mm -hmm. their faces and then they out the abuser they put, put the picture of the abuser mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. so i think we need shows like that too yeah. mm -hmm. we I do to catch a predator twitter, yeah. yeah back on twitter it was it like makes a it used to thing it used to mm -hmm. put yeah. a stigma on the the abuser, the abuser, a huge stigma at that time. I was even small when it was happening. It was happening, but I still remember. Yeah, you know the whole thing of um, the sex offenders register in Ghana. I think that's something which I think laws are very important, and I think sometimes you know it doesn't work. We understand in Ghana it doesn't work, and sometimes your money speaks for you your money yeah. would be the one yep. to make things happen, happen. here yeah. and it's quite unfortunate that a lot of this doesn't just happen to it happens to people that are vulnerable that are less um economically inclined mm -hmm. so what would you say to those people people out there that is happening behind closed doors they don't have the money to pay the police officer to put this person behind the bars like what are your thoughts on what can they do well um i can't first of all i don't blame you because even if I felt like I also had all I needed, his confession, all that, I still didn't feel confident going to them. So even me, that I feel like I could have done it, I didn't want to because I was like, where will it go? So I just um, want them to know that at least if there's someone around you that you trust, you need to, to talk to them. If you feel ready and comfortable to share it, which is very important. Um, I don't believe in putting a time limit on when somebody should come forward, even though there are legalities like the statute of limitations in different mm -hmm. um, regions and stuff like that. But um, 
I think that when you are comfortable, you should at least tell somebody so someone is aware. And um, about like outing the person, I know that like it's not easy mm -hmm. because you know they'll say, "Oh, you're destroying his reputation. Mm -hmm. You're destroying her reputation." This, 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 and that. Like People it start. A long time ago. Yeah, it happened a long time ago. Right Why are now? you bringing it yeah. up now? And there are some ones that, like, you know, when maybe the person gropes you or just touches your mm -hmm. your private parts, yep. how are you going to document that? Yeah. That that one, it ends up being like my word against yep. his word. So, how is that punishable by law, like groping somebody? I don't think other yeah. laws that punish. Punishes somebody who grabs another person or you know touches your breast I or I don't think so. Um, tries to kiss you forcefully in Ghana. I mean, the laws are <laughs> yeah. there, mm -hmm. they're there. Yeah, it's yeah, clearly but enforcement, uh, exactly. Enforcement they the are problem. not enforced. And, um, like you said, what if you don't have evidence? Because I was lucky to get um, a confession mm -hmm. because he just was talking, <laughs> was talking. The eagle. Yes. Yep. Um, he even blamed me. Wow. Um, he said that I rushed my breast on him. <laughs> and that, that's why he, uh, so what happened wow. was- And uh, what was your reaction so, to that? So what happened was he asked me for a hug, right? And he, his sister just died. Like who, mm -hmm. so I hug him, right? And his hands are like, just land on my behind. And so like, I'm pushing, pushing, pushing. He's just smiling the whole time. And like, after he lets go of me, I'm like, why would you do that? And, and then he was like, oh, it's because I haven't seen you for a while. So um, as I said earlier, I confronted him and we had a back and forth. And this time he was blaming me and he said that I rushed my breast on him. And that's why he did it because I was trying to tempt him. Wow! <laughs> so that's why he actually grew. Up. Yeah. Yeah. You. yeah. Oh that my goes God. on to the crazy and the fact about. I'm even scene. trying to see if her breasts are <laughs> that big. Exactly. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. I'm like, dude, what breasts? <laughs> what breasts? You know. He's such a loser. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the victim blaming. So all these things. Um, and I kind of um. I've gotten to the point where I've realized, like, Charlie, when it comes to essay, there will be people who will talk rubbish. <laughs> they do it to every survivor, and that's all the more reason why we should ignore them. Yes. They'll blame you. They'll talk yes. rubbish. They'll say, eh, what were you doing there? All this trash. Just yeah, ignore it. I feel it. like we need to get into that, the yeah. myths and the facts about essay, because people get a very weird misconception, like, you were wearing something so short. Why were you going for a walk? You know, your mother told you not to go there. Uh, what What would you say to those myths? Like, what would you say to battle those? Um. So as for like, I'll start with the walking. Um. Naturally, you have to be careful. But if someone comes and commits a crime against you, it's still wrong. Mm -hmm. And then um, about the clothing, I think it's rubbish yeah. because I've been, you know, dressed looking like I churned butter and I was still essayed so it's it's definitely not the clothes and let's mm -hmm. remember people essay kids too so what was the child wearing right. yeah you know it doesn't make sense it's stupid mm -hmm. yeah sometimes it be your own friends who are like blaming you mm -hmm. because they are friends with you have they are friends with the person who essayed you and your friend is like because it has happened to like my best friend they're in a friendship group and I don't know if I should discuss this, but yeah, it happened to her. And then years later, she told one of her friends that, oh, this is what this guy did to me. And she's like, mm, I thought you guys were cool like that. So mm. that's so, that why happens. are you? That happens. <laughs> every, like, I feel like almost every girl guys, has that experience and that shouldn't be. Like you guys have that thing going for you. So why, how is there a problem? I'm like, what? When she told me, I was like, what? Is this an educated person? No. She's, she's not a friend. Because boundary. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, I she's agree. Not that's friend. not a friend. <laughs> that's, that's not a friend. That's, that's not, not a friend. An yeah. enemy that has revealed herself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> she has like, what do you mean? This girl insane. Like, your friend. Mm. And even some friends 
end up drugging mm-hmm. their friends, so-called friends yep. and aesthetics for cement. Yeah. yeah. For yeah. money. Like for money. For money. Yeah. I've, I've heard stories like that. Yeah. And, and let's I not think forget, it's so shameful. And let's not honestly. forget that some sexual assaults end up in femicide. Yes. Yep. Women die because yep. men who rape them want to clean up evidence. Mm. Let's get into that. Yeah, let's get, let's okay. get into that. <laughs> you stop it, continue, girl. <laughs> okay, so um, this is very factual. I'm glad she brought this up because that's also one of the reasons why um, people are also afraid to come forward because they'll be threatening you. Hey, if you say something, I'll do this, I'll do that. Um, just intimidation tactics mm-hmm. sometimes and and. Sometimes it's it's not intimidating. They're serious. They're serious. If they get Don't you, if they get you. Yeah. <laughs> if they get you, some of them will like um, threaten to sue you and all these things. And this is all part of like the problem. Like people are kept silent. And then on top of it too, if like you said, um, things can improve with the justice system because we should be able to have witness protection and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. They're supposed to be there to do all of that. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, and unfortunately, we're still trying to get there, but at we're least it's, there. it's you know, it's getting there. Getting there. Yeah. yeah. Are we? But I, no, but another yeah. thing I want to make mention is that I think there is a myth or a misconception sometimes in Ghana, especially, mm-hmm. that the law doesn't work. And is Does if it? you listen to a lot of people, <laughs> it's just naysaying where it's like the law doesn't work. The law, if you if you have a problem sometimes you can actually, the law actually does work. It might take some time, but the law actually does work. From money. From what I've, and some money, but from what (laughs) I've heard, I kind of know that the law works in certain situations. So know your, like be, be, um, be aware of the laws because a lot of people do not really know those things, even in terms of like your human rights and all those things. So when you have a detailed, um, knowledge on that as a human being i think it should be very important for all human beings especially if you live in a country to actually know your human rights and basic things because sometimes people do not know those things and even some people don't know that when somebody does something in terms of the essay and the grape that it actually Mm -hmm. falls under that category Mm -hmm. and is it becomes like oh you're tripping you know, mm. yeah. Because a lot of people do that. Even the grown people in these high places, in terms of even we see those things happen, like hugging somebody, and you can see the uncomfortableness yes. in the girl's face. Even sometimes you can meet some like a guy or something, and he's done something, and you can just see from the lady's the face finger. that she's just not happy yep. yes. with what just went down. But she mm. just has to say face, especially because you're a lady. Yeah. So you're supposed to act like um because he's lady you're in like. the midst of people. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to act like oh I, I didn't like that. Yeah. And if you act out, then you become the bad person. Yeah. But sometimes somebody needs to act out. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> somebody I think someone to needs to act them. out sometimes mm-hmm. so that men know that this is not the best way. And women do not like to be treated like that. Yeah, yeah. like Twitter. Yeah. That's why I used to love Twitter in 2018, 19, mm-hmm. 2020. I think it was 2020 during yeah. lockdown. Yes. It yes. was like it was it was like a monthly thing where girls would just come and talk yes. about their abusers. They would literally add them on Twitter with their pictures. Wow. My own friends, people I never expected to. And the stories they shared, it actually helped because most of these girls went through the same thing and they didn't even know they were SA. And wow. I was a victim. Like, I didn't know I was SA till like I read the stories and I was like, oh, yeah, I went through the same thing. So yeah. it's like. And then sometimes coming out with a mm-hmm. person's name, it, it helps bring it helps. other people his other victims because some some people yes. are not one time offenders. Yes, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. They, they yes. So I, I remember there's someone people. that it happened to recently in Accra where they the person did one of these things, sent mm-hmm. that a, a picture a dick of pic? their yeah, dick pic. PG. I don't know what's with men and dick pics. Like, are you PG insane? And did I ask for it? And, and most time it's not there. And that was my, and you know what? That's why I said that that was very disrespectful. It's always big and log, it's not there. Yeah. <laughs> And, and that was so disrespectful <laughs> that he had to come out with an apology. <laughs> That's how bad it was. That's how bad it was. Yeah. Oh. And especially he had to step down. 
from oh, a post. Okay. So Good. you see, yeah, this you are or yes. So you get reprimanded for just doing Did anything he really and being step a down or was just to save face for the company but because he, sometimes oh, these companies that. they like covering up for abusers. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. So so you see, you see, this is what I'm also understanding even right now in society. Democracy is for is is for the people. So. One thing is you're saying that he probably didn't. He stepped down for the for just the company. He didn't I realized, step down. I feel like, like it was just the cameras, safe for the safe comments. But you know what I've realized now in terms of people are getting awareness and all those things. Mm. If as a company we realize as like citizens or people that consumers that we purchase your product or we anything that you produce and realize that we are not in your best interest, mm -hmm. we tend to shift away. So if there was a company that did that and think that that's the part they want to go. When people get to know that this was going on, they immediately stop. Yeah. Yeah. So you should, so these are ways where us as like citizens or consumers or the thing these is, things. That's council culture working in Ghana. Like, do we really council people? Really council? Do we council ah. people? Do we council? <laughs> well, you're supposed to give people grace. No two ways about it. But with certain sensitive topics or certain sensitive <laughs> things, I don't think... People still have to be accountable for yeah. their yeah. for their wrongdoings or yes. their anyhow doings, and they should feel it. They should feel it because feel so, it. so another person just but doesn't I feel do it. Like they just post about you on social media. They share their yeah, story. Yeah, behind. It. And that's yeah, it. my dear, do you believe? Do you believe in um, believing the victim until proven otherwise? Mm -hmm. What's your take on that? Because yeah. well, I some people that. always say. Oh, the, this person is lying. You see, she could be lying. You see, we need evidence. Lying. Yeah. Me personally, I believe. I always believe anyone who comes forward to say I have been this, I have been that, mm -hmm. so proven. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. I always believe the victim. Um, I also always believe the victim. I would rather believe someone who is a potential like victim than a potential abuser. Yeah. So, um, I would choose to believe them. Um, because I know what it feels like not being believed or blamed or, you know, being blamed, yeah. but I choose to believe them first because we need the support and the encouragement. And as you said earlier, what do you do when you don't have evidence? Yeah. It's your word against theirs and it gets dangerous because they can actually sue you yeah. and they did it all. Mm. But because you have no evidence, evidence yeah. no concrete ev evidence, you know, you you have to be careful with the naming. You yeah. end up Even, looking like a liar. Yeah, and exactly. Sabotage, people yeah. start bullying you. And defamation you. Of, of... And you of have to retract mm -hmm. that's, that's the main that's thing the that you do. Yeah, there's a suit. Because you're yeah. spoiling I've actually yeah, seen reputation. a celebrity in Nigeria do that. Sue their um, victim? Yeah. Someone that yeah. came out. That's, that's uh, terrifying. So, and then they made her, sure. they put her in police custody and made her wow. tweet an apology. Oh, I was like, this no. is mad. Oh. Been, let's see. Yeah. Oh, wow. And I feel like as ladies, I know that um, it's difficult and sometimes you may not be in the right mind frame to do this, but keep certain evidences. Yeah. Like if it was grape, and you still have like the body fluids of it on the clothes or on whatever, keep it. Yeah. As evidence. evidence. Even if you're not going to do anything with it, put it in a bag and keep it somewhere. Exactly. In a yeah. Ziploc bag yeah, and zip -lock seal bag. it okay. airtight. Yeah. You never know the day. Yeah. 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 The day come, that will come mm -hmm. handy. Exactly. Exactly. You know, exactly. This is some juju or that person now. It's a pill. But um, like on a serious note, like let's look at Ghana because sex is a currency here in Ghana, like if you want to go places, all you got to do is open your legs yeah. and you can fly up in the ranks. Yep. That is how so it fast, is in so Ghana. Fast. So as somebody who is in the creative industry, I have seen that is kind of like the first thing that people want before they want to talk about business and it's quite annoying. And if you're not careful, it can lead to SA or grape. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes you might be thinking, I don't want to offend this person. I really want to, you know, move up in the ranks of doing this and doing that. So as ladies who are creative or in the business, like what are your experiences of that in the workplace? Who wants to go first? <laughs> Who wants to go first? I could go first. Okay. So um, I've, I think I've already said this before. The man who wanted to go on a date with me, mm -hmm. but and he didn't want to pay me for a job I had done, mm -hmm. and he wanted to go out with me. He made sexual advances to me the first time we met, and I told him I wasn't interested, but he still went on to say, oh, no, 
I want it. I'm like, no. So he was trying to use the work yeah. to, and then I'm upcoming. Like I'm now starting. Obviously, I need the thing. So yeah. mm-hmm. it was a battle. It was a battle. But I had to put myself first, or else if I went on that date, he could have. Oh my gosh, God knows sorry. what would have happened. He could have potentially as aid me so i think sometimes we need to put ourselves first and we shouldn't jump onto every opportunity, opportunity. Yeah. yeah some opportunity could just be um what's the word like it could be fake like yeah they just want to yeah they just want to get you in a room alone rape you yes leave you you don't get the opportunity <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, I just yeah. think we should be safe. We should yeah. Be yeah. try and yeah. be safe. Out Don't there. be too desperate for yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And I, yeah, I, yeah, I would also, I would, I, would, I would love to add, like the Bible said, you took the words right out That's of my mouth. That was the word. <laughs> don't, don't do stuff out of desperation. Because, yeah. mm-hmm. no, that that's not going to work in your favor. Yeah. And I think a lot of times when you, if you've ever found yourself in such a situation, it's also because you operator from a place of desperation and the person mm-hmm. can sense it yep. and know your boundaries and also know what you're willing to do and what you're not willing to do now if you feel like you have the talent you you know you're polishing it up you're doing everything that it takes there is delayed gratification and yeah. some yep. good things do take time mm-hmm. so sometimes if you're just looking for the asap results that's when you might fall in situations where mm-hmm. someone could definitely tell that this is what you want to do and then most of the time offer like sexual advances and say i'm gonna do this if you do this Mm -hmm. and i think this part of africa most parents teach us that we should kind of shy away Mm -hmm. from putting someone in their place Mm -hmm. because sometimes Mm -hmm. that thing really works where somebody says i'm not here for this like you should be able to stand on like stand firm for what you stand for so if someone comes in like say i'm not here for this And I, and recently, I don't know if you guys watched, like Thames did a whole like documentary talking about the fact that she wears baggy clothes and she goes to the studio and she says, I'm here to record my wow. music. Sometimes you need to make that wow. audible move or that move mm-hmm. that says, I'm not here for no Anything rubbish, else. you know, don't like try. don't even try it. Your aura alone should literally exude don't try that yep. thing with me because yep. I'm not about that that business. And when and 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 when they try those things, then you give it to them. Yeah. Yes. Some, yes. Because it's some like yeah. Some people up, need that. Yeah. Because yeah. some people have already made up their mind. Like as she said, if I want to do this to you, I want to do this to you. You yeah. don't even need to make any advances. You don't even need to give them any exactly. Idea. exactly. And, and something like that, <laughs> mm-hmm. you should leave it yeah you yeah. should definitely leave it because sometimes that's what i'm saying mm-hmm. scarcity mindset yeah because yes. you, you should think in an abandoned way exactly. where it's like and i'm a creative i know i'm smart i'm intelligent yep. i'm all always good things. Things. Yeah. exactly yeah. so if i meet somebody and i i have all these creative things to offer and yeah. you just want to look at the shot picture exactly. and say open your legs to me or let me sexually let me touch your titties you. <laughs> and, and and that's what's going to get me i see you're not serious and i know that if even though you're, you're praying in a business it's not going to last. It's not going to work. The foundation is wrong. The yeah, foundation yeah, yeah. is wrong. So I don't even want to be part. Person. Yeah, the character. Yeah. I don't want to be yeah. want to be part of such an institution. Exactly. Yeah. So you should be able to just get up and say, "Look, this is not for me." Yes. And I swear, anybody that has done that has the, a successful mm-hmm. story. Sure, yes. Seriously. Yes. So we need that mindset, honestly. Yeah, we do, yeah. and it's also important to like note that. Even when you set boundaries, some people don't care. Mm-hmm. You can mm-hmm. be firm and stern, still cry. They want to try. So mm. me, if you don't care, I too, I don't care. It's I'll true. go and tell everybody. Yes, yes. yes. It's love that, that simple. Don't be afraid. Love that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ladies, it's been so it's been amazing. I mean, before I like end it, is there anything that you want to say? Is there any last remarks, Rachel? Yes. So if you are a survivor, male or female, and you are watching this, please do not blame yourself for what happened to you without your consent. You did not deserve it. It is not your fault. And um, if you want to come forward, if you want to tell someone, if you want to report them and your spirit is telling you, I'm ready, I want to do it, listen to yourself. If you're not, please don't suffer in silence. Um, Still try and speak to somebody, maybe a relative, someone you trust, a friend, um, 
if you can go to counseling or therapy, you know, talk. Don't just suffer in silence and know that you are not alone. You know, we're so many of us have experiences. Um, and if you are a male watching this, I want you to know that being assaulted as a male doesn't make you any less of a man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lovely. Thank you for that. No problem. Thank you. And please do give her NGO a follow, you know, reach out to her and see how you can work with her as an organization, as a business, as an individual. I'm sure she'll be happy to hear from you. So yeah. thank you for coming today, Rachel. It's been pleasure, very informative. Yeah. I've learned a lot. Um, and I feel that going forward, I feel more empowered now. Yep as a lady for myself and for my community around me. It's been lovely having you as, um, you know, as the cast ladies. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for it's your input. Yeah, it's been a pleasure yeah. here. And my fellow co-host, Genevieve. Hell. Genevieve. Hey, Thank hell. you for, you know, giving us your points as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been the last lick and it's been great. I mean, I hope you've learned a lot wherever you are. Don't forget your voice matters. You matter. And no matter how insignificant something was that was against your will, it matters. So feel free to speak up when you are ready. There are so many organizations in Ghana and around the world that can be at your service to help you at your pace to overcome certain issues. It's been Lapel today as your host on The Last Lick. Give us a follow, you know, on our social media and subscribe to us on YouTube. We love you and we hope to see you again. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>